Hi, welcome to this video lecture about semi-structured in-depth interviewing. It is a method that is very, very commonly used in action research. You can write a whole book about interviewing, but in this video lecture I intend to just give you some insights in interviewing. And I also will uh, be giving you an example of an interview that I did with someone from the slum. So, let's have a look. So I will be seeing Juliette and she will play the role of Justine. So the story is not real, it would otherwise get a little too personal. I asked Juliette to not prepare the interview, but to answer as if she is someone from the slum. You are going to see just a part of the whole interview where I will give you some written instructions. Yeah. That's a nice place! Thank you! How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me and thank you, thank you so much for letting me ask you some questions. No problem. Uh, like I said the other day, I invited you because I'm very curious about uh, your opinion, mm. about your daily life and the challenges that you're facing every day yeah. and how you deal with those challenges. And um, I hope in the end that I will understand better what is going on in your daily lives, what you're struggling with, how you deal with it, and also how you see possible solutions for the challenges that you're facing. Mm. And that, that's why I'm sitting here with you to ask you some questions. Mm -hmm. And would, would half an hour, an hour, would, do, would that do okay for you? Would that be right? Mm, that's all right, depending yeah. on the questions you're asking. Yes, it's sometimes, sometimes it takes only uh, uh, like half an hour, but it can take up even to two hours. It depends on what uh, what you would like to share with me and how in depth we're going uh, into the matter. So you can just tell me anything what uh, refers to your opinion, and there's never a wrong answer in it. And also, everything will be confidential, mm. which means that everything you tell me will stay between me and you. Mm -hmm. So I will be making some notes and if you're okay with it, I will capture it on a voice recorder. But it's only for me to remember what, we're, what we will be saying. Mm. And so I'm going to, if you agree, is that all right to put it on? That's okay. Yeah, great. That's very nice because now after the interview, I will be able to listen to it again and remember everything, make some notes. Mm. Um, but everything you say is only me hearing it exactly. And the results in the end will be generalized. So that no one will ever know who said what. So that means that you are anonymous and mm. that nobody will know what you said. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions so far for me? Um, not really. No questions. No? Yeah. Okay. Shall we start the interview then? Yeah, we can start. Great. Um, my first question is, how does a normal day in your life look like from the moment you get up mm. until the moment you get back to bed? Um, to start with, my name is Justin and I sell fruits on a daily basis. So I wake up at 5 in the morning. Yeah. I pray, of course, and I dress up. Mm -hmm. I go to the market to purchase what I sell. But it all depends on how much I have. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I buy things that are less than what I want because I don't have the money to buy everything that I want. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always take breakfast because mm -hmm. I cannot manage that with my 10 children. You have 10 children? Yes. 10 children. So. If I understand you correctly, you go to the market in the morning to yes. purchase the, the, the fruits that you're selling mm. and breakfast for your 10 children. Yes. And you're saying that you don't always manage to buy everything you want to buy. Exactly. How come you can't buy everything? I am a single mother. Mm. Bringing up 10 children by myself is not easy. Sometimes I end up using the puppet I have to take care of my children than to sustain my business. Yeah. You use what? I use the money 
that I would use to, to sustain my business oh. to take care of my children. Oh. Yeah. Does that mean that you then are not able to buy the fruits to then sell and generate new income? No. Okay. How do you deal with that? How, uh, it's pretty how do you hard. do that then the next day? It's pretty hard. But then I believe in God. I mean, I pray every day. So my day comes, I take it the way it comes. And then I use what I have. At least I sell the products that I have. When I get money, that's why I get some money to buy for my kids or to eat. And then use the small money to go back the next day to the market and buy anything. Okay. Yeah. And that's how you manage to yes. get some new fruit to sell again. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain me a little bit more about being a single mom? Um, I'm 35 mm -hmm. years old. I have I gave birth to my first child when I was 15 years. 15? Yes. So now I have 10 children, but not from the same dad. <laughs> my children have about five daddies. Really? Yes. So you gave birth when you were only 15 years old. Yeah. Can you explain how that was for you, to give um, birth at that age? I've grown up in a place that is too congested. So many people, they have different behaviors. The youth in my village take, they abuse drugs. Mostly they take marijuana, they take mila, you know. They take your? Mila. Some, some drug, mm. yeah. So um, as a young girl, I couldn't go to school. My parents did not have the money to take mm. me to school. So I saw myself starting this relationship issues at a very young age. Yeah. So let's get back to the first question. How does a normal day in your life look like? We talked about getting up and having breakfast. And what do you do next? Um, I have young kids. My last one is two years. So she goes to school. Mm. Yeah, I dress her up and then get her ready to go with her siblings to school. Uh huh. Yeah. Taking care of the children and bringing them to school. So after I do that, I go to the market. I go and start selling my products. Ah, yes. so then you go to the market to sell. Mm. What kind of fruit do you sell? I sell jackfruit, papas, avocado, onions, tomatoes, so many things. So many things? Yeah, yeah. so many things. So you purchase them first in a market to then sell them on another market? Yeah. Or how do you do it? Um, I purchase them from a bigger market and then I sell them from a small market near my, my home. And you sell them, of course, to, to the people, to my neighbors, to the people in the community. For a little more expensive yes. than you bought them, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. And do you always sell the amount that you want to sell? Not really. If I purchase things like avocados, I sometimes get ones that are already ripe, mm -hmm. so they can get spoiled. Oh, yeah. So if I'm not selling all of them that same day, I end up selling them at a more cheaper price than I bought them. Oh, really? So then you actually lose uh, yeah. money? Mm -hmm. Oh, how does that, how does that, what does that do to you when you have to sell them for a lower price than you bought them? It is bad because considering that I have these many children, I don't yeah. get to, to make more money to see my children living a good life. Yeah, and then the next day for me to go back purchase more products, I find that I have less money. Yeah, yeah. and then the next day you have less money to yes. get to the market and purchase your new products exactly. again. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I can imagine that that must feel very bad for you indeed. It feels bad for me, but not really for me, but for my children. Mm. I mean, I don't want to be a bad mom. I always want to show my children and want try to give them whatever they want. Yeah. But if I cannot sell my things at at least at a, a higher price that I bought them, then that really hurts. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? 
life. Well, life goes on. My kids have to be happy. They have to eat. So I deal with it. I, I try to live the next day the way it comes and try to see that I get something for my children. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to see your children happy? Yes, and educated. I mean, if I couldn't be educated, then at least my kids have to be. I'll try as much as I can to see them where I didn't go. Yeah. yeah. Seeing them happy is important to you. Seeing them educated is yes. important to you. Why is that important to you? As uh, when I was growing up, I didn't have those chances. Mm -hmm. My age mates went to school. In fact, some of them were having working in bigger institutions. I didn't have that chance. So I don't want to take that chance away from my children. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm 35, but doesn't mean I'm old. I still have the energy to work and Good. see my children somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, how would you think? Would you manage? to see your children happy and educated? Well, um, currently I'm a member of some organized group of women. Mm. Yeah, we do keep some money on a weekly basis. Oh, really? Yes. So when I get that money, I try as much to add in my business to make it evolve. And once it does, then I'll have cause to make more profits. Uh huh. Yes. So how how does the system work with that group of women? Um, these women came together. I mean, they all lived in the same way that I live. So we're like we're not earning a lot of money, but we can do something for our future, for our children. So we collect about five thousand shillings ah. per week. Per week. Yes. So at the end of the month, our group has 20 women. So at the end of the month, one of the 20 gets the money. She puts it in some developing idea. So I just had uh, the interview with uh, Justine, played by Juliet. And uh, I think Juliet played her very, very well. And I'm very happy that uh, the interview went so well. I had the chance to uh, ask her all kinds of questions. So let's go home.